Back, we continue live right here at Pittsburgh CW. Bob Pompiani and Gene Carrier with you at 412-575-2600. That is the number to call. Before we go to the lines, we have Mr. Uh, Guillermo Huffman who says, guys, what's going to be the biggest story at Steelers training camp this year? Gene, what would be your take on that? Uh, I guess it would be how many, uh, what Mike Tomlin calls varsity reps uh, <laughs> Mason Rudolph gets and how he looks. I think that's what most people would be looking at. And uh, I think it's a pretty good storyline. Yeah, you know, because Ben Roethlisberger won't, if we go by last year and the year before script, he's not going to play, if at all, in the preseason. Yeah, probably not. Uh, so Mason Rudolph should get plenty of opportunities, as will Josh Dobbs. I think Josh Dobbs is a confident young man, and Landry Jones has his position of backup right now. It will be interesting to see how that all works out. Meantime, let's go to Paul on the north side, beginning tonight. Hey, Paul, how are you? Welcome to the uh, sports call. Good, Bob and Gene. How are you? We're good, We're thanks. Good. Okay. Uh, we took a little of my thunder away about Rodriguez, but I'll add uh, Harrison into the deal, too, okay? What about him? Well, I mean, he's he's not had a really good year yet. I know he was hurt for a while, but even when he comes back now, he's, like, striking out, you know, he looks on base tonight. Yeah, he, he bases out. Loader, right? He's not, you know, he's not producing. And as far as Rodriguez, I, I think they should just uh, cut their well. They're not going to cut their losses, obviously. They'll probably hang on to them. Well, at some point, they may have to. I mean, you know, they're paying him $6 million a year. To me, again, that's the reason why he's even up here right now. If it was a normal player who didn't have a salary like that, um, they wouldn't be trotting him out there 36% of the time to start. I know tonight was a uh, flu situation with Mercer, but, Gene, it just doesn't make sense. So, as far as Harrison, I think he's going to be traded by the end of the year anyway. You? Yeah, that might well be, depending on how it goes here between now and the end of July. Uh, Harrison's just a streaky player. I mean, he's always been that way. He doesn't necessarily discourage me. I mean, he had an opportunity to, you know, put the Pirates back in the game there tonight and didn't do it. But um, a lot of a lot of underperforming offensive players over there. Noah in Pittsburgh joins us right now on the Sports Call. Hello, Noah. Hi, how are you guys doing tonight? Hey, how are you? Good. Good, real good. Yes, I was calling in to ask about Polanco, and do you guys feel that he should be sent down? I mean, he's batting 210, and he's really, he's really struggling. And I feel that Meadows would be a lot better in right field. He's really looking good as a rookie. I wouldn't send him down. I just wouldn't play him. I, I would play Meadows every single day in right field for now until he shows me he can't handle it on a regular basis, and then I would put Polanco in. I, I mean, this is not a charitable situation. You have to go by your best players, or at least the guys who are hot. You're six and a half game, soon to be seven and a half games, maybe out of first place and fourth place. You can't keep doing that. Uh, this is not a babysitter, you know, put on training wheels league, uh, Gene. You play who's producing, and if you're not producing, you don't this play. This the big leagues, Bob. That. It's the big leagues. <laughs> You know, uh, Lloyd McClendon, who was a really underrated manager when he was here, in my view, used to say that he didn't make the lineup, that the players made the lineup based on how they played. Unfortunately for Lloyd, he had no players capable of making a good lineup. But, you know, tonight uh, Polanco came up and hit a ball. I don't know if you were still there, Bob, but he hit a ball yeah, foul. foul. You know, it was probably wound up in the river. And it just occurred to me that that's, you know, that's the way Gregory Polanco should be able to hit the ball, not every time up, obviously, but once in a while. And he never does that. He only hits mistake pitches or pitches that he's way out in front of, any kind of decent quality pitch, and he's helpless up there. That's, that's where he is right now. Whatever that means for his uh, immediate future, I mean, they're going to decide, but that's where he is right now. All right, let's go to David in Finleyville. Hey, David, welcome to the Sports Call. How are you? Fine, thanks. Um, just by the way Fleury is playing in this series, um, do you see any chances of them coming back? I think the series is done probably in six or seven. Thank you. I'll hang up. Well, six or seven would be, if you're Washington, you don't want that to happen. I think Fleury has not been all that good in this series, but I also think it's a lot of what I always say this about goaltenders. You're only as good as your, your team in front of you at times. And I think Washington has been superb. People don't want to credit them, but they are a terrific team, and they have been a terrific team for three years, Gene. Uh, if you look, you know, the last goal last night, five on three, there were others that were just, he's at the mercy of what the guys in front of him are doing, like any goaltender would be. Um, has he been sharp? No. But I don't know if I'd say he's been awful either. 
Uh, you know, th there has been a goal. I don't know about you, Bob, but I haven't seen a goal yet where I thought, oh, you've got to stop that one. I mean, uh, obviously, you're looking for your goalie to stop the puck all the time, but uh, he's had a lot of uh, deflections and bounces and stuff like that. I don't think he's been that bad. I certainly would not entertain for one second, you know, the prospect of changing them. I, I think he's carried them so far. They, uh, they've got to let him play it out, and it would not surprise me if he came back. Gonna be interesting to see. All right, let's go out to line five. That's Matt in Munhall. What's up, Matt? Hey guys. So, uh, if your choice for Smith was Ovechkin or Holtby, who would it be? Kuznetsov. <laughs> or him? No, I, I think it's gonna be Ovechkin. We talked about this last night, Gene. It's just because all throughout the failures of Washington in the postseason, it's been Alex Ovechkin who got all the blame, even though he didn't deserve all the blame. And so I think this is going to be his opportunity. When, when things go his way, he's going to get it. And he deserves it, but I think you can make a case for a Kuznetsov. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like it's inevitable that he'll get it if they win. But I, I would vote for Holtby. I think he's been tremendous. He has been, although he gave up a, a goal last night that allowed him. He gave him, up a funny-looking goal. Yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to Mark in Carrolltown. Mark, how are you? Good. Doing good. Good. What's up? Hey, uh, I thought uh, after game one of the uh, Stanley Cup play or finals, uh, the coach from Washington just seemed to look at that tape and they just took off from there. They took whatever they did wrong in game one and they just put it to Vegas. And I, I would don't disagree. Think Vegas is I would disagree with out. that. I would disagree with that from this point of view. Uh, I think games three and four at home for Washington were really good. But I think game two was going to decide this series. Uh, if you'll remember, Vegas had a five-on-three, two-man advantage for a minute and 17 seconds and failed to score. And then at the end of the game, it was Holtby who made that save. Gene, if that goes in and it goes to overtime and Vegas somehow wins to go up two games to none, I think it's a completely different situation. Now, to Washington's credit, they built off that and they won two at home impressively. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think... Uh I've been surprised at Vegas's inability to get any kind of consistent forecheck going, uh, and the Capitals have been tremendous in the faceoff circle. They didn't have a, a good game from that standpoint in Game One, but since that game, they, they've been tremendous. Hey, you know, uh, I, I like Barry, I like Barry Trotz. I think he's really talented. You know, the extent to which he deserves credit for this uh, three-game winning streak, you know, that's hard to say. But I mean, the, the Capitals are. Certainly not uh, at a disadvantage with him there. I think he's really good. So I'm glancing at the television. We're talking here, Gene. You didn't mm -hmm. see this, but uh, Pirates had first and second one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. A fly ball to the outfield. Frazier at second tries to tag and is thrown out at third. And made the last out. And made the last out at third. Oh, my word. Base running. At the Ruth Chris Sizzlin shot for you. And more of your calls are right here on Pittsburgh CW.